G'day, my name's Jason Griffiths and I head up the engineering team here at CompNow. And I've been using Apple computers since I was uh, about that tall and data was stored on these things. Not since the original 1984 Mac or the G3 iMac or say the original transition from PowerPC to Intel have I seen interest and excitement levels as high as they are right now and with good reason. The Apple Silicon products have just been amazing. Our engineering team including myself, have recently upgraded to the 14-inch MacBook Pros, and we're loving it. No more ramping of fans at the slightest hint of work, everything's fast and quiet, and the battery life is phenomenal. Today, we're looking at the all-new Mac Studio. Over the last few days, I've been putting it through its paces, and it hasn't disappointed. It comes with either the M1 Max, 10-core CPU, and up to 32-core GPU model, or for those massive workloads, a crazy fast M1 Ultra, which fuses two M1 Maxes together to give you 20 CPU cores and up to a crazy 64 GPU cores. Let's have a look at the I.O. because I want to point out a few things. On the front, we have two USB-C ports that are upgraded to Thunderbolt ports if you opt for the Ultra model. And I'm really pleased to see an SD card reader up front. It's perfect for, say, a school or business edit station to quickly ingest your camera files, or maybe you're programming Raspberry Pis, or sending files to a 3D printer. It's just a great convenient option with no more messing with dongles. A quick look around the back. We've got an audio jack, HDMI port, a couple of USB-A ports, Thunderbolt 4 ports, and the last port is an ethernet jack. But, it, but it's not just any ethernet jack, it's a multi-gig port. And what that allows you to do is utilize your existing Cat5e or better cabling with the appropriate switch, depending on your cable rating and distance, your ethernet connection will negotiate at either 2.5, 5 or 10 gig. It's a great cost-effective way to get your Mac Studio or lab of Mac Studios connected to a fast NAS or server for storage and archiving. In fact, what we're seeing with the latest Wi-Fi 6E access points is they actually need the faster 2.5 or 5 gig per access point to be able to deliver the extra bandwidth that comes with Wi-Fi 6E. So you may already have or soon have the switches needed to run your Mac Studio at those faster Ethernet speeds. Another trick up the sleeve of the Mac Studio and M1 is the inbuilt media encode and decode engines. This allows hardware accelerated encoding and decoding of H.264, H.265 and Apple ProRes codecs, taking a lot of the work away from the CPU and GPU. We did some tests and in the apps that take advantage of these engines, doing a final export of your project in say Final Cut or DaVinci Resolve, the export times were slashed compared to Intel Macs or even PCs all while remaining nice and quiet. There are some great videos on YouTube that go into more detail. Now onto the studio display. In many ways, this is just as exciting. It's a premium display, but for me, this is something I stare at for eight plus hours a day, and I want it to be good. I will also probably keep it for multiple generations of Macs. I've been daily driving the older 27-inch Thunderbolt display for years in hope that Apple will bring out something to replace it. There's just something about having a single cable, built-in speakers, webcam, excellent color, it just all works seamlessly. With a 5K panel, the Mac OS scales perfectly. Third-party displays just don't compare. There's just one more thing I wanted to test, and I reckon it's one of the longest supported Apple products ever made. Does my original 20-year-old 5GB iPod work with the Mac Studio? And well, I'm happy to report with a Firewire 400, the 800, the Thunderbolt 2, the Thunderbolt 3, it, yeah, yeah, it all works. And I can transfer a thousand songs at lightning fast speeds. Rock on! Mm -hmm.